If we don't address this enormous issue of food, climate change, health, environment, we will regret it deeply. I'm Professor Sarah Bridal, and I've spent the last 20 years looking out into space using data analysis to understand the universe. About five years ago, I realised that we have a big problem down here on our own planet. Until then, I had been so busy wondering about how it all began, I hadn't thought much about where we are headed. So I started to look at the data, and it turns out that what we eat is changing our climate. This is because about a quarter of all greenhouse gas emissions come from food production, and different diets cause different levels of emissions. On average, a vegan diet produces half the emissions of a diet that includes meat. But for individual meals, the reductions can be even higher. If you have a microwave potato and beans instead of a steak and chips, you would cut the footprint of your dinner by 95%. Even the government's own Committee on Climate Change is recommending making a 20% cut to meat and dairy. So why aren't politicians asking us to cut back? Politicians are frightened of food. It's a huge part of the economy. It's a major feature of culture. And that's the difficulty. Government doesn't like to intervene. Nine companies control 95% of the food market in Britain. But as we saw with the consumer-led backlash over single-use plastics, both supermarkets and governments can be forced to take action. The supermarkets make money out of having lots of meat, whereas selling raw vegetables is not exactly massively profitable. That's their problem. Vegetable consumption is in decline and has fallen by 13% in this country in the last decade. On the other hand, we're eating so much meat and other animal products that 83% of all the farmland on this planet is being used for producing meat, farmed fish, eggs and dairy. And that's despite the fact that it's only providing us with 18% of our calories. This is an unsustainable way of feeding the planet. Here on a quite small farm of 20 acres, we have six full-time people. Uh, growing around 120 or more tonnes of food a year for direct sales. If we were to convert that back to grassland, which is what it was when I came here, and cows, we would only have one person working a few hours a week, um, producing probably only around 10% of the weight and value of food that we're presently producing. So it's a big difference in terms of how many people you will feed. The body representing UK farmers says that increasing fruit and veg production will help realise the country's net zero ambition, which they say also includes continuing to provide climate friendly meat and dairy products. Emerging technologies like vertical farming could provide a way of growing fresh produce in cities. Our kind of small vertical farms that we have in some of our in-store locations are two metres squared in size. To grow the same volume of produce, you need 115, 116 metres of land if you're using traditional agricultural methods. In last year's Agriculture Bill for England, the lack of mention of dietary change was seen as a missed opportunity. And now a cross-party group within Parliament is looking to overhaul how we produce and consume food in this country. I do think we should be moving towards a more plant-based diet in this country for two reasons. The impact that, that um, meat is, uh, production is having on climate change, but also for the health of the, of the nation. Looking at why unhealthy foods are cheaper than healthy foods. We have a real problem with, with obesity, with um, chronic illnesses, diabetes, and, and um, a more plant-based diet will help those things. We've seen with COVID that obesity contributes to a higher death rate. The government has commissioned an independent body to write a national food strategy, which will report their findings in the spring with a likely focus on healthy eating. I met with TV and radio presenter Sarah Jane Crawford to find out what impact a vegan diet had on her. 
I was that person eating KFC every weekend. And what did you think of vegans then? I didn't want to hear about it. I didn't want to be told. I was not interested. And then when I educated myself, I was horrified. It's not just about how we can maybe prevent cancer and heart disease and diabetes. It's also about the planet. We've got nowhere else to live. The problem of climate change can sometimes feel too overwhelming. But what the data shows me is that every time we make a choice about what to eat, we have an opportunity to help reduce our climate impact. But we can't do this without the same kind of commitment from governments. This is a big year as the UK hosts the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to set out a vision for how we can transform the food system to provide healthy food for us all while protecting the beauty of our planet for generations to come. Well, joining me now from Wiltshire is the CEO of the Soil Association, Helen Browning, who also runs a farm producing beef, dairy and pigs, as well as cereals. Thanks very much for joining us. I mean, we have been here before. The five-a-day message about eating more fruit and veg was implemented back in 2003. Yet the film shows vegetable consumption has gone down by 13% in recent years. Clearly, it's not enough to hint, it's not enough for government to ask you to do it. What should they be doing to really make a change the way we're eating? I think you've got to start in schools a lot of the time and we've got to make sure that people have got the cooking skills and the access to kitchens so that they can start to cook good food for themselves. Because I think what we all want to see is people getting back to eating more fruit and veg, more pulses, but a balanced, healthy diet made up of, of, of natural ingredients. And that means people have to have the skills and the, uh, the opportunity to cook in that way. I mean, we know, don't we, that um, obesity has made the impact of COVID worse. Do you think that's more likely to make us sit up and listen now in a way that we haven't before? I think people are really interested in, in health at the moment. There's, uh, there's people are eating differently and uh, they're at home. Uh, and there does seem to be a real interest in health and, and, and investing in our nation's health is probably the most important and, and, and cost effective investment that governments could possibly make. So getting this stuff right and really thinking about how we can help people get off the ultra processed food bandwagon, which is the big problem we face health wise, something like nearly 55 percent of the food we eat is ultra processed. And that's having proven to have a big impact on our health. One of the big problems with this argument, eat less meat but higher quality meat, eat more fruit and vegetables, the problem is that it's always been the preserve of, of privileged people who can afford to do that, who can afford to go organic. How do you make this a, a, a democratic thing? Well, actually, fruit and vegetables and pulses and nuts are actually re reasonably cheap. They're relatively cheap compared to meat. And we would say that people should be eating less meat but making sure they're spending that money on good quality meat, um, it will be better for their health and to be better for their planet. But actually uh, eating a more plant-based diet is usually a really cost-effective way of eating. When we go into schools and change the menus, we can usually do that at the same cost, despite the fact that you're feeding them far more healthily, far more sustainably, just by reducing the amount of meat and making sure that meat is a good quality, healthy sort. There is obviously the issue of choice, but the reality is you can go into a supermarket and you can buy a large chicken for four pounds or you can buy a large organic chicken for 13 pounds. If you're on minimum wage and trying to bring up two kids, it's obvious the choice you're going to make, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why I think we need to see a better economic framework from, for government, which actually does make sure that the pollution that those intensive systems generate, whether that's climate change impacts or chopping down the rainforest to feed those animals, that those are uh, actually embedded in the price of the food. And so that doing it better doesn't, isn't such, such a relative cost to the, either the consumer or to the producer. 